So besides music, there's probably one digital asset that content creators download way more than anything else. And you guessed it, that's LUTs. And what happens to most of us when we download or even buy these LUT packs from our favorite influencers or whatever website, we're often severely disappointed at the lack of results in the footage. Now, is this at the fault of the influencer who created that LUT pack? No, the issue is probably that you don't know how to use the LUTs properly, just like all of us have. Don't take it personally, we gotta learn together. So in today's video, I wanna show you what a LUT is, how to properly use it, why it's not working in any of your videos, and how to get the best results possible. And then I wanna tell you in the end about the premium LUT pack that I use. This isn't sponsored by any means. There are a ton of great packs out there. I just wanna simply tell you which ones I'm using if you care to go and purchase those. And because I realize not everyone has the budget for buying LUTs, I wanna give you a resource to the largest collection and best of free LUTs that I've ever seen. Uh, so stick around till the end to see all that. Now, first of all, what is a LUT in its most simplified form? form well basically it's just like a filter that you place over your image and what a LUT does is basically looks at your image looks at the luma values the the exposure the colors and basically has a set preset of you know parameters or whatever that um, is going to change each color so for example it's going to you know if it recognizes you have a specific value of blue in your image and you put a like vintage type LUT on, maybe it's going to lift the gamma so it's going to not be as deep blacks, it's gonna uh, kinda have that very like creamy vintage vibe to it. And so it's basically taking specific colors and manipulating them to a specific look. And there's basically two ways that most people go wrong with using LUTs, and that's either they just simply slap it on the image and call it a day, or they're using the wrong LUT on the wrong image. Like I just talked about how each LUT is basically looking for a specific color and then showing how to manipulate that. Now if you look at say like Peter McKinnon's LUT pack, which obviously is an incredibly popular one, the dude's images look incredible. If we look at one that let's say is on footage over like one of the Canadian beautiful snow top mountains, that LUT was created for that type of environment with super bright, almost overexposed white, uh, maybe very deep blacks and browns from the rocks. And so if I just try to slap that on over top of like me running through the green woods or something, it's probably not gonna look so well. Probably the, the largest one is everyone who goes for that teal and orange look. Well, unless on set and in that environment, you lit things to have a teal and orange type of look, you're not gonna get that. I remember one of the worst videos, at least look wise, um, was both like, I did like some, oh God awful, I don't even wanna show it here, Patreon video and like a update video like three or four years ago. I was wearing like a deep blue shirt and then I was on like a taupe wall or had like a gray wall paper behind me. And at that time I had just come from like doing still photography where I loved desaturating um, the colors, that was just my style at the time. And I was just slapping on LUTs left or right or leaving it desaturated. The other one was filmed, again, pale ass me. I had a white shirt and then I was in my parents' basement with taupe walls. And I tried to slap like a teal and orange um, LUT on there and it just bad. But then you fast forward to, I believe last year when I filmed a product commercial in a really high-end hotel uh, that was super cool in, in terms of tones. Everything was, you know, a lot of good blue tones and deep blacks and things like that. And then we had accent lights, uh, practicals, all the lamps were very warm, um, as well as I brought in a light with a warm gel on it. And so the environment itself was teal and orange. So that is the most crucial thing. So if you want to use LUTs, you need to make sure that you are looking for something that is going to match the environment or the scene or the set design of what the footage you are filming. I'm sure that I can make that snow top mountain uh, LUT look uh, good, probably in like this environment, because this is very cool, um, you know, deep blacks, things like that. It may work in this, so I'm not saying that 
the snow top mountain LUT is only going to work on a snow top mountain, but the color values and everything need to be relatively consistent for it to look good. And so I'm gonna say the thing that every single person who does one of these videos says, a LUT is not going to fix a bad image. We've all gotten lucky and we've shot like with, I don't know, like a product with like natural soft light coming through a window, maybe being diffused by like a curtain or something and it just looks perfect in camera. So you load that in, you slap a LUT on it, and oh my gosh, it looks absolutely beautiful now. Then every other time we're like, what the heck? Like I didn't have to really plan for the other shot. Why is this one any different? So let's hop on the computer now and look at some of the examples as to uh, what works and what doesn't and why that's happening real quick for a couple minutes. Um, so this is actually a trailer for a, uh, a short feature. It's like 45 minutes. Does that count as a feature? I don't know. It's like a long short film. And right now I just throw on a very temporary grade, basically just going through and deciding what shots I like to be um, warm or cool or things like that. So here's an example of a LUT that's most likely going to look pretty good uh, once I slap a LUT on top of it. And I haven't tried it yet to this one, but for example, if I just do a simple um, correction here, Bring up the scopes real quick. All right, so do that. Then I go to my LUTs. This is how myself would do things in the past. And I would say most people do. Skin has a bit too much red in it, I think. I'll actually reintroduce a little bit of green. So yeah, most people would do something more or less something like that, where they just slap on a LUT and then make a few minor adjustments and move on. Here's another good example of something that you can do very simple, or you can go that extra step basically and go even further. So for example, here is the raw clip. Um, and then I simply add a color correction, just brighten things up uh, and correct the white balance. And then I slapped a warm LUT over on top of that uh, just because I wanted that scene to be a little bit more warm. But we really can go some extra steps with here. Um, so this is what I would personally do. Take my white balance picker and correct that back. And then her eyes are super dark. So I'd go into the power windows here Feather it out quite a bit. Brighten these up. Just a tad, we'll add in contrast. All right, so those are just a little bit brighter now. Um, but of course, she moves, so I need to go into the tracker. Simply do good old track there. So now you can see, even though she moves around a little bit, um, all that's still tracked to the actual shot, and her eyes are still much brighter now. Now for another example here, using say like this Children of Men 1 uh, LUT here, and yes, these are movie inspired looks. Uh, again, in that LUT pack, I'll tell you guys about at the end. If I just slap this on here, uh, here's the what it looks like. Obviously, this looks like a muddy, hot mess. This, is, I mean, this looks like something that if I was doing like a horror film 10 years ago, um, I'd be like, this looks awesome. Everything's like green and deep and black and blah. And this comes down to, again, this specific setup and set did not have um, many variations of colors that this LUT is going to try to pull from. Now using the same exact LUT, here it is, literally slapped on another image. There is a correction in here just to um, bring up the uh, brightness and midtones a little bit but this isn't fully graded either. I would wanna bring out this cardigan or whatever it is, or tissue or necklace, um, probably her eyes. But it definitely looks a lot better when compared to that. And this, um, just the way it's shot, I mean, there's a huge separation between the background. Um, this was a white wall. You got this warm lamp that kinda has that creamy vintage look we were talking about in the beginning. 
her skin tones. We actually had like a makeup artist on day, so she's not like shiny um, and got a little bit of makeup on there to just look better on camera. You notice that she's wearing and on the set are just a variation of colors that this LUT is going to give a certain look. It's not necessarily better or worse. Obviously I can turn this off um, and this is what the raw file looks like. So my point here is that before you just go and download every single and buy every single LUT pack out there, hoping that, you know, having a Peter McKinnon LUT pack is going to make your videos look like Peter McKinnon, it's just not the case. He may be in a completely different environment than you. Uh, he has a different camera, different lens. The subjects that he's shooting are different. And again, keep using Peter as an example. Again, nothing's wrong with his or any other creative LUT packs. They're not scamming you by selling. You just need to learn how to use them properly. And I'm gonna give you one final lesson right before we get to the resources. So this tip is a great starting point for getting a better look without looking like you just added a super over stylized filter to all of your videos. So I'm back using one of the underwater shots here and I'm just going to slap on something that looks pretty atrocious. And I could go back to my color correction here and try to raise the blacks making things a touch better. This took me a long time to learn, but something that once you do, it kind of just seems logical, is that you don't need to use the LUT at 100%. Now it's gonna be completely different depending on the clips that you are in um, and using. So some may be closer to that 100% mark, some may be closer to 30%. Can slap that on there. And this basically, um, it's kind of like a Rec. 709 image now. Just have to correct. And again, that's still by no means perfect. So definitely learn to control the intensity of the LUTs that you are using, and that's going to greatly help your images as well. So I know this was a ton of random information kind of bouncing back and forth, and so I want to leave you with some resources you can go to to help you get better looks and kind of follow step-by-step -step guides into how to color grade an image. So the specific LUT pack that I use is from Lutify Me. They have a handful of different packages that you can choose from that come with a couple all the way up to a bunch. I have the Professional, which has all of them, including the red uh, LUTs here, and they're super awesome. I mostly am using, if I look over here on the side, color grading LUTs, generic log since I shoot in RAW. If you don't have RAW, then you would shoot in the Rec. 709, but they have the same LUTs for all of them. If you're shooting on red, you go into here. Um, and I really like the movie inspired looks because again, you have all your favorite stuff Black Panther 1 and 2 That's pretty much what I use for this shot pretty much in the past handful of videos Got hyper realism like French comedy film. You got get out Dunkirk ton of different stuff on here If you don't want to pay anything then I suggest checking out fresh LUTs uh, again, this is all user uploaded stuff um, but it's a very clean look and they're constantly adding new ones. And it's cool because you can see how many people downloaded them and how many people hearted them. So that way you can see, oh, this one has a ton of hearts or a ton of downloads, so this LUT must be really good, like this late afternoon Wanderlust. It's over 2,500 downloads and 132 likes. Um, so you know that one's probably pretty good. If I click on it, I can actually see like, oh, this is meant, uh, this was filmed with like Canon. I can drag, I can see what the raw one looked like and go to here. So again, you can see what sort of things, there's some green grass, you can see whites and you can see how that LUT is going to interact with everything. You also, when you go to browse LUTs, you can look for the specific uh, camera that you are shooting in. So for me, I'd look at Blackmagic 4K. And so all these are filmed with that in mind. Um, so again, if I go to this like warm style one down here, this was specifically made with uh, black magic raw film, so it's gonna be good. And then in terms of resources, uh, my two favorite guys, Avery Peck, this guy is insane. I wish he would upload more. He's only uploaded literally a handful of videos, but the ones that are there are incredible. Uh, the biggest one I'd suggest checking out is I think his most popular one, uh, which is simple workflow for perfect skin tones, because that is telling you is like the hardest thing to achieve. And he breaks it down perfectly, literally in under 13 minutes. 
um, to where you can be a pro at that. And he does different looks based on different commercial type looks. A simple method for clean whites, also harder to achieve than it sounds. So the second guy here is Kazzy. He uploads all the time. He also has a ton of courses and training and you know stuff that you can pay for if you want him to be more like a mentor and that sort of thing. But his free videos that he puts on YouTube are no joke. I absolutely love when he color grades like a specific movie. I just got um, done watching the Joker one where he literally takes you through a 30 minute process of uh, how to create a specific look using that. And right now I'm learning more about node trees and kind of setting yourself up to keep you organized. Great stuff in here. He's a total professional colorist. That is it guys. Let me know down in the comments below if you found any of this helpful. Have you had any issues with LUTs? Do you even use them? Do you just create your own and use a style that you've created? I'd love to hear what you guys think. I'm currently working on the next how to make videos like, uh, and I'll be revealing that soon. So definitely get subscribed so you don't miss any notifications for that. I'll see you guys in the next one.